Hey everybody, Home Slice Center here, and in today's video, we're going to be showcasing a Pokemon that got nerfed this season that is actually still very strong, and that is XL Heliolisk. I actually got this idea from a fellow content creator, Though Technical, who was able to have some very nice success with Heliolisk even post nerf. I tried it out, and honestly, I was very impressed. Even though Breaking Swipe only debuffs 50% of the time, a lot of people kind of forgot about Heliolisk, so there's a lot of teams out there that are double or even triple weak to it, and I was able to climb up to 3390 ELO and number 64 in the world on the global leaderboards. So without further ado, let's hop into the matches. Hopping into the first match, picking up a great lead Heliolisk into Talonflame, opponent saves switches into a Shadow Dragonite, so they are core broken by the Heliolisk. I'm going to fire off the Breaking Swipe here, fishing for a shield and a debuff. I get the shield, but I do not get the debuff, and I'm going to send in Gliscor. My debuff luck with Breaking Swipe was honestly very poor in these battles, but I did have better than average Night Slash luck in terms of getting the boost, so it, I feel like it kind of all evens out in the end. I go for the Night Slash, I don't get the boost that time, I try and make it to another move, and Shadow Gliscor is able to hang on, winning me control of Switch Advantage, which is very, very nice, as I can keep that Talonflame aligned against the Heliolisk. Opponent is going to send in the Talonflame to get some extra energy, but I can bring back in the Heliolisk. Heliolisk, farming up, and I am going to be shielding up whatever they throw here. Opponent is going to go for the slightly cheaper Fly. In the back, they have Zygarde. And this is honestly just a win for me. I can go for the Breaking Swipe. Breaking Swipe does get the debuff this time. I rebank a Thunderbolt for later, and I can send in Annihilate. And Zygarde, I mean, it's very bulky even in the Ultra League, but it really does not appreciate double super effective damage from Ice Punch. And Annihilate, we know this, it has a very nice attack stat. So Ice Punch, even though it isn't the strongest move, is going to give a perfect farm down for the Annihilate. Back in comes the Talonflame, but Annihilate is going to be able to finish this game out strong. Shadow Ball takes it to 1 HP, and one counter from Annihilate means game over. Moving into the next match, leading Heliolisk into Ampharos, the battle of the electric types. Now, we are able to pace at the same pace to our first and second charge moves, but Ampharos is on a 3-2-3-2 cycle, whereas Heliolisk, after 3 to the first, just ends up being 2 for the next couple. I'm able to switch and make a catch of the Brutal Swing onto my Shadow Gliscor. The opponent stays in for a bit, they send in Giratina, and I'm immediately going to start spamming out these Night Slashes. I'm going to look to try and fish for a potential boost. Unsuccessful there, but may as well try again. It's the nice thing about Wing Attack Night Slash combination is you get to a lot of Night Slashes, and there's the boost right on cue. I'm already pretty low, so I'm not going to shield, but my opponent will not be able to farm me down before I make another one, so they are forced to throw their energy, whether I got the boost or not. So they don't have a lot of energy, and I can send in Heliolisk, and now it's my time to over farm quite a lot with the Helio. They're going to fire off the Dragon Claw, that's not a problem. Heliolisk isn't the tankiest Pokemon ever, that's why having a move that can get an attack drop like Breaking Swipe is very, very nice. I'm able to pick up the knockout. My opponent had a charge attack loaded. I figured that I would just shield and go for the extra volt switch because I know that one breaking swipe will not be enough to knock out here. And now I have the back-to-back -back breaking swipes loaded. That's going to connect. And I'm firing off breaking swipe number two and it should be on charge attack priority. The breaking swipe will be shielded. Again, no debuffs from the breaking swipe. Come on, Heliolisk. The brutal swing will pick up the knockout. In the back, opponent has greened and this is just a win. Annihilate just absolutely dominates in this matchup, even without a move like Close Combat. It's only hitting for neutral damage with the Ice Punches, but Counter from Annihilate just does so much damage thanks to its very, very high attack stat. And I'm actually going to be able to get a full Counter Farm down here, if I'm not mistaken. They go for the Crunch, and that's just not going to matter because they need five Mud Shots, and they're not going to get there. In comes the Ampharos. They realize they have no Win Con, and they resign the match. Hopping into the next match, picking up a very interesting lead, Heliolisk into Shadow Alolan Sandslash. They're running Legacy Shadow Claw, which means that they have no way of dealing damage to the Heliolisk unless they land a charge attack. They end up baiting, so now, if this Thunderbolt lands, they're actually going to be able to make the drill run in the middle of my next Bolt Switch, so I'm not going to let that happen. I aggressively switch into Annihilate, and I'm able to snipe with the counter. Opponent, they're thinking about it, and they send in Jellicent, but this is where that one counter advantage is very helpful. Normally, I would get outpaced here by one turn, but since I have a two-turn head start, I'm able to outpace and grab a shield from my opponent. Typically, I'd be pretty happy with just grabbing a shield and leaving it at that, 
but my switch clock is not up and there's is. I want to get that back into alignment, so I'm going to shield, go for the shadow ball, opponent makes a catch onto Ampharos, but at this point, this game should just be won. Ampharos takes so much damage from that shadow ball and look at Annihilate. I know that we are focusing definitely on the Heliolisk, but Annihilate is just absolutely unbelievable as well. Honestly, I felt like the entire team worked really well in conjunction with each other. My opponent is going to fire off the Surf. I throw the Breaking Swipe on alignment there. Pretty atypical for me to go for a move on alignment, but in this case, I wanted to fish for the debuff. My opponent here realizes there's no more Wind Con, and they end up going for a bad Manor Shadow Ball, which honestly, I do kind of respect, because at this point, they are not seeing my third Pokemon, and they know that. So, I definitely respect them after I got the debuff, just saying, you know what, I'm not winning this one anyway. Going for the bad manners there. Moving into the next match, leading Heliolisk into Shadow Dragonite. This is a pretty nice matchup for Heliolisk, which is able to win both the Zero Shield and the One Shield, whether or not a debuff gets applied. If I don't get the debuffs, then I will just take the shield advantage and end up safe switching into the Gliscor. Opponent plays to charge attack priority there, which is definitely a bit of a risk, because if I went for the overfarm, they'd be giving me a massive amount of energy. I'm going for Breaking Swipe number two here. This just KOs unless they shield, so they are going to shield, and now I can send in the Gliscor score and I did get the debuff from that breaking swipe. I'm more than happy to let this go and just look to continue to farm with the Gliscor. Opponent sends in Talonflame, so I'm going to start launching these Night Slashes. Night Slash is going to connect into the Talonflame, continuing to farm up with the Gliscor. I should be able to knock out with three Night Slashes plus the Wing Attacks, so they're going to have to throw a move here. And Gliscor gets the boost! Okay, Gliscor, I see you going for another Night Slash. The boost honestly doesn't matter a whole lot here, as that Night Slash would have knocked out anyway. My opponent chooses not to throw their energy so they just get knocked out i can send in the annihilate annihilate i can take a dragon claw i'm not worried about that whatsoever i'm just gonna save a shield for annihilate in the back is polyrath opponent just has no more remaining win conditions and they resign the match moving into the next match going up against jason 2890 a trainer who i battle a decent amount every season and i don't think i have ever beat him and he's running a pretty unusual Pokemon here. He has the XL Lantern. Lantern goes to the Surf. I'm going to shield it up and then go for the Breaking Swipe. I would love to get a debuff here to really allow my Heliolisk to be healthier for later in the game, but it's not to be. I don't get the debuff. I'm now going to fire off the Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt is going to get my opponent extremely low, but just not low enough. Lantern barely able to hang on and make it to one final surf. Opponent save switches into a Shadow Grand Bull and it's running Snarl. This is a very, very interesting team here from Jason. I'm going to be shielding up the Crunch. Crunch does not get the debuff and I'm going to farm up to a Breaking Swipe plus a Thunderbolt. I'm firing off the Breaking Swipe bait. I get the shield and now I'm going for the Thunderbolt as this will be able to pick up the knockout unless he double shields and it does pick up the knockout. In the back is Clefable. I click the switch button, but unfortunately the game does not let me switch out. And up this much energy, Clefable just wins. I try and catch a Meteor Mash, but I'm unsuccessful. And unfortunately, my losing streak to Jason is going to continue. I will get him one of these days. But today is not that day, unfortunately. The Clefable just has way too much energy. Even if I successfully bait here, this is just not winning. Because he's able to get to two Meteor Mashes before I'm able to bait and make it to an Earthquake. So I do get the bait, but he's already there. And just, man, one of these days, I will be able to beat Jason, but today, unfortunately, is not that day. Moving into the next match, leading Heliolisk into Tentacruel. So Heliolisk definitely feasting on the meta a little bit here. I'm farming up, and I'm just full sending the Thunderbolt here. Heliolisk doing a little bit of a battle cry there. The opponent respects the Thunderbolt, which to me was a bit of a surprise. But I'm going to be shielding back. Let's see if they do get the debuff. And they do get the debuff. I'm farming up. And I just go for a bad bait here. I should never be breaking swiping. I should always go for the Thunderbolt. Because they call the bait. And that's just very poor gameplay for me. I'm going to let this go. But I should realistically never be losing even shields here to a Tentacruel. I'm going to send in the Gliscor. And just fire off the Night Slash right away. I want to get rid of the Tentacruel and have a very healthy Gliscor to deal with whatever they have in the back. Opponent sends in Giratina, and this works out great for me. A lot of people, not only are they unprepared for the Heliolisk, but they're also unprepared for the Gliscor. Gliscor just proves to be a very effective core breaker for a lot of teams. Honestly, a lot of Ultra League teams that I build, including this 
one are weak to Gliscor, so it is nice to finally have this Pokemon. They're going to be firing off a Dragon Claw. Again, that's not a worry for me because I'm gonna live the next Dragon Claw as well. This is gonna be close, but this is where having that XL Gliscor comes in clutch, going for the Night Slash, they catch on Greedent. A lot of people love running Greedent, and this team is ABB strong against the Greedent, with both the Gliscor and the Annihilate doing very, very well. Tho's original team had Jellicent on it, which does make the team a lot stronger into some Pokemon, like a lot stronger into, let's say, an Annihilate, opposing Annihilate, that is, and a lot stronger into an opposing Polyrath. I did end up really liking the Gliscor, though, as I'm able to get a full counter down Annihilate, just an absolute beast as always, and we're able to take the win. As we move into the next match, I'm gonna show basically how not to play a Polyrath lead. What you wanna actually do is just stay in with the Heliolisk. Cause you make it to a Thunderbolt when the opponent makes it to a Scald and they need a Scald to knock out. So you can either force a shield or switch advantage. And honestly, either one of those is pretty nice. But switching here and trying to bluff an Aerial Ace that I don't have, the opponent no shields, I'm forced to end up throwing energy that is not super effective. It's resisted, so I waste energy. I'm down a shield, I'm debuffed, and now they send in Charizard and have basically just lost the game already. Like, I can still try and play out of this, but the Charizard basically perfectly overfarms here to the point where they can blast burn here, and they're going to be able to blast burn the Heliolisk as well. So I basically just lost the game on the spot by how I've played it, whereas if I stayed in, I would have been in a significantly better spot as in the back is Registeel. So they were so weak to Annihilate, but unfortunately down two shields, I'm not going to be able to pull off the win here. They go for the Zap Cannon, they get the debuff, but realistically it doesn't matter. They just have too many shields. Even if I successfully bait, there's no reason for my opponent not to shield as they will be able to make it to a Scald before I make it to the Shadow Bowl. So if I had a chance to play this again, I would definitely stay in with the Heliolisk versus the Polyrath lead as here, I'm hoping maybe I can get a farm down, but no, the Polyrath makes it to the Scald and the opponent is able to take the win there. But yeah, so that's definitely how I would play it better going forward. Moving into the next match, picking up a pretty decent lead, Heliolisk into Trevenant. This is a matchup that is dependent on whether you get the Breaking Swipe debuffs or not, as of course, the fast attack, Volt Switch, not going to be doing a whole lot. I go for the Breaking Swipe. I do not get the debuff. As I mentioned, my debuff luck, as far as the Heliolisk went, was not very good, but I still did very well overall with the team. I believe I went 10-5 and five with the team, climbed up to 3390 ELO. So the team, I felt like, put in a ton of work, even if Heliolisk was really not getting in the debuffs I wanted. But now this just sets up really nice farm for the Gliscor. Opponent is going to aggressively pivot into Skuntank. Skuntank by no means is a good response to Gliscor. I tank any one move and I can threaten a one shot with an Earthquake. I'm expecting that they want to try and preserve the Skuntank. If they're switching this in, they're probably weak. So I am going to bait, save the energy for later in case I need that Night Slash to KO the Trevenant. And now I can just send in the Annihilate. I'm going to shield up the crunch as I do want to try and preserve HP and I'm going to look to massively over farm here and I'm able to play to charge attack priority and I've countered it just into a range where an ice punch will be able to knock out. Are they going to send back in the Trevenant here? Because I don't think Trevenant wants to deal with this energy. They send in the Trevenant and we are off to the races. Ice Punch picks up the knockout in the back. It's Ampharos, and this opponent just no longer has a win con. Brutal Swing doesn't knock out here, so I don't have to shield. Annihilate has some okay bulk in the Ultra League. I'm able to make it to the Shadow Ball, and whether they shield the Shadow Ball or the Earthquake, they're going to lose, so they choose to no-shield the Shadow Ball, and we're able to take the game. Moving into the next match, leading Heliolisk into Obstagoon as I go up against Philbeg. I've had some very fun battles versus Philbeg in the past, so I'm excited to see what he's running here. Leading Heliolisk into Obstagoon, of course, never a good time. He's going to go for the Night Slash and then send in his own Gliscor. I'm very weak to Gliscor with this team, at least opposing Gliscors, so this is honestly probably the best case scenario, but unfortunately, this is where having a high rank Gliscor is a negative as my opponent is going to win charge attack priority, and they're actually running Aerial Ace as well, so a pretty interesting moveset. The Night Slash is going to connect, I'm hoping that I can make it to one more Night Slash, but it's not to be. I'm going to send in the Heliolisk and just go for a one shield farm down on the Earthquake. This way I can exit with a lot of energy that I can potentially use to threaten my opponent in the endgame. 
I decide to save this energy and aggressively switch into the Annihilate. And in the back, it's a Shadow Gengar. Look at the spice. You have to respect it. There's just nothing I can do to win this game. So I am just going to go for the Ice Punch here. And I believe just resign the match. But big props to Phil Bagman. What a cool team. Hopping into the final match. And we see the Dream lead. Heliolisk into Jellicent. And the Jellicent is staying in. You best believe they have to be core broken to be staying in this terrible of a lead. They're going to be firing off the Surf. The Surf is going to connect. In comes the Mandibuzz. I throw two Volt Switches to make sure that I'm throwing on good charge attack timing. And Thunderbolt is going to do so much damage. That is an XL Mandibuzz taking damage like that. I'm going to save this move. I know I can survive a Dark Pulse. And I'm actually going to send in Gliscor. Gliscor is completely walled, but that's honestly okay. I'm going to go for a Night Slash and a farm down here. I can throw one Wing Attack and the Night Slash, but the game lags and gives my opponent a free sneak. That's just so unfortunate. But I get the boost, so they make another move, but I get the boost. Gliscor should honestly be in an okay spot now. I'll never know what my opponent had in the back because after that boost, they did not want to play anymore. All in all, I think Heliolisk, despite the nerf, does still have a lot of play in the current Open Ultra League rotation, just because people are disrespecting its existence. There's a lot of teams that are ABA weak to electric, or for example, like a Giratina plus Flyer Core, or Giratina plus Water Cores, because people aren't really taking into account the unique coverage and resistances that Heliolisk can provide. It is a Pokemon that unfortunately does feel the nerf to Breaking Swipe, but I do think it is still, as Tho mentioned in his video, in a pretty good spot overall, just due to the fact that completely people are just disrespecting it as a Pokemon currently with their team building, so you can definitely catch some opponents off guard. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're enjoying the content, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And a special thank you as always to our wonderful channel members. The support you guys provide is sincerely appreciated, so thank you guys oh so very much, and until next time, I've been Home Slice Henry.